for foodstuffs, uh, you might find vegetables and uh, fruits from Chile uh, right next to some uh, vegetables and fruits that were grown within several miles of the store that you're in. And you can't usually differentiate as a consumer. Uh, most consumers are quite, um, you know, in a hurry to pick up their groceries and don't have time to read the labels and um, to do the kind of detective work you might need to try to protect yourself. Uh, we do know that um, imported foods may have some increased risk because the, um, the FDA has higher standards uh, for um, foods that are found and grown in the United States and the ones that are imported, it's more difficult for them to maintain high standards in other countries. So if some, there's been outbreaks associated with Mexican cheese, there's been outbreaks with uh, raspberries from Chile, there's been um, a number of imported food issues. I would like to say though that I think the FDA is trying to cope and change some of these practices and unfortunately, the government is in a huge deficit situation currently, and there's really not enough funding to do the adequate testing because of the globalization of the food chain. Um, and you can't always tell where your food comes from and what types of testing it's been um, subjected to. Fascinating analysis, Dr. Perlman. What would be your recommendation if you could gather all the food producers in one room? What would you suggest to them to assist you as a physician in your treatment of your patients? Well, there's a lot of foodborne illness in the United States today. And um, basically, this isn't just listeria. This is a huge listeria outbreak that we're in the middle of right now. Um, there's been some others. Uh, that have been approximately this big, but not since 1998. Uh, we've never seen listeria outbreaks associated with cantaloupe. If I had those people in a room, I would have to tell them that a lot more work needs to be done in the food chain to understand the best way to um, test all the foodstuffs. And more money and resources needs to go into this area, certainly. There's a controversy currently in the cantaloupe industry, whether or not cantaloupe should be washed before it reaches you at the table. And frankly, um, this isn't settled uh, in any ways or means, in my opinion, because there are people that produce cantaloupes in high country or dry environments where the cantaloupe is just picked and then it's put into cartons, put into shipping containers, and then sent to the grocery stores. So that cantaloupe is never washed. Um, the people that produce the, the dry cantaloupe that's not washed, um, it's, it's the same exact fruit as the cantaloupe that is grown in a wet, muddy environment. And these cantaloupe from the wet, muddy environment are put into tanks where they are washed. And this is uh, Jensen Farms was uh, the cantaloupe with the listeria was subjected to a processing such as this in Granada, Colorado, another town where their cantaloupe were washed in a tank and then supposedly rinsed off and then were put into the shipping uh, chain. So uh, what's optimal here? Uh, how do we deal with this? Should um, all fruits and vegetables be washed and how do we monitor that wash water and so on? There's still a lot of work to be done in this area. Wonderful. Excellent advice. Dr. Perlman, we understand that you are involved in another, many other business opportunities. Can you discuss some of those and how they relate to your practice? Well, as an infectious disease doctor, I became aware of what I would call unmet needs in this industry. And the fact that patients enter the hospital and are, t are treated with a variety of antibiotics um, and sometimes causing side effects and uh, diseases such as um, C. diff or Clostridium difficile, which is basically the, the antibiotics wipe out the normal bowel bacteria 
And so then you get a toxin-producing bacteria that grows in your bowels. And this can actually um, be very uh, difficult disease to manage with, a, with uh, some fatalities. So um, what we're doing is treating patients in an indiscriminate way with a lot of antibiotics, some of which are unnecessary. If we were able to diagnose people in a more rapid and accurate way, uh, this would be a huge help to the doctors. And one of the things I'm doing is trying to advance the industry in diagnostics. But it's not just in infectious diseases either. I'm working in other diagnostic realms. Um, there's uh, around cardiac uh, uh, problems. If you come to the emergency room and you have chest pain, sometimes your EKG, the electrocardiogram, doesn't show that you have any ischemia or damage to your heart, and then they run a blood test called a troponin test. And sometimes that test does not disclose um, whether or not you are, in fact, having a heart attack in layman's terms. So I'm working on some more specific and sensitive ways to determine what to do with those types of patients, because a lot of patients get admitted to the hospital or sent home who um, fall into different categories that we can't dis differentiate adequately currently. Um, and then I've got um, a couple of other business ideas that I'm pursuing to, alongside these other diagnostics that I just mentioned. Wonderful. Dr. Promish, can you, again, re refer back to the issues that consumers face in the preparation of their food to prevent the impacts on their health with foodborne bacterial pathogens? Well, certainly um, doing a thorough inspection of your food when you're preparing it in your kitchen is critical. If you think that something smells bad or looks spoiled, by all means, this should be disposed of properly and not, well, um, you don't want to eat that kind of thing and take a chance um, if there's any suspicion. And then in relation to the cantaloupe, um, possibly, but this hasn't been proven by any scientific studies, Possibly um, washing the outside with a brush and um, a water solution. There's lots of uh, um, preparation type um, uh, materials that can uh, be used for fruit washes. And um, then using a clean knife um, and preparing the food properly because it's suspected in this cantaloupe outbreak that the um, knife would introduce the listeria from the outer part, part, the rind of the cantaloupe into the fruit section as you're cutting it. So if you wash off the outside adequately, um, this should be sufficient. There's not really any evidence that the listeria is inside the fruit, embedded inside the cantaloupe. It's on the outside. So. Um, I think that's some advice in relation to cantaloupe, but that can go along with other fruits and vegetables as well. So you recommend a thorough washing and the handling of the utensils as well as the visual and uh, olfactory type examinations prior to consumption. Is that correct? Correct. You know, Dr. Perlman, as we've been talking about foodborne pathogens, and there's a new Food Safety Modernization Act that the federal government has been uh, mandating as a result of legislative uh, enactment. Do you think that that will have a net effect on your practice of reducing these incidents 